Hi all, I have yet another very exciting gambit to show you today. It's the Colorado gambit. So you might never have heard of the Colorado gambit. Uh, it's for the more adventurous. Uh, I am already an adventurous player because after e4 I have sometimes played knight c6 as you've seen in my blitz chess. And quite often uh, I get a good game because my uh, plays d4 and after e5 I get my tango variation. There is a killjoy though that occurred to me in an over the board game which I eventually lost but I did have a good position where white tries to kill the joy of black's game with knight f3 and after e5 we have a kind of scotch game and white might be in their territory they might have actually been preparing for the scotch game. So this tango system yeah after knight f3 you can play d6 which is a kind of miserable version of the, of the piets defense. But there is another adventure here which you might not know about. Uh, it's a move which you might never have thought about. Um, apart from d5 that is, that's that's interesting as well. But this is even more adventurous than d5. And the move is f5. So this is the Colorado Gambit. So the upside is psychologically the opponent might be shocked, wondering how much you know about this. What is this all about? Should they take the pawn? Should they try and hold on to the pawn after? So these are the questions stem from this position. Let's say white dares to take the pawn to test you. What is this stuff? Well, one of the points here is that white's center has been slightly destabilized and d5 has the promise of taking this pawn and developing a piece. So two check boxes ticked there want to be able to take that and develop a piece. Now say white decides, hold on a sec, blacks violated principles, this diagonal's weak, and plays this move knight h4, not only clinging on to the pawn but introducing queen h5. So here this is uh, an interesting situation indeed. Now if you try and extinguish queen h5 with knight f6, I, I think white would have some interesting options there, uh, including, for example, g4, and maybe even bishop g2 later. It looks like a uh, very interesting for white just to hold on to that pawn. But you can be uh, extremely daring here and actually play a move e5. And this, this leads to one of the more crazy lines. I'll get to knight h6 later. A much safer line is knight h6, but if you want to be totally crazy, e5. And this leads to one of the craziest variations within the Colorado gambit. So we have queen h5 check. And now it seems it will be absolutely terrible to play g6 because there's the prospect of white playing check and queening taking this rook. But play this anyway. g6, this is great fun. f takes, knight f6. So white plays g7 check, knight takes h5, g takes h8 queen. So we have uh, one of the key positions to know about here. So you take the knight on h4 and white has to tread... <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing when I say this. White has to tread with some, with some accuracy at least. Because there does exist a game where white did actually lose in the correspondence game, believe it or not, where they didn't play the critical move, queen takes h7. Queen takes h7 not only logically pins the knight, it kind of makes sure the queen can potentially get out of you know being trapped in the corner. It's more central on h7. So that, that is the critical uh, move here. But believe it or not, in the correspondence game, d4 was played. And here... Bishop f5 actually denied now queen takes h7. So the queen stuck on h8 and after bishop d3, in fact e4, bishop e2, and now black castled queenside. And the whole thing's been very well justified here, black's play. After g3, bishop b4 check, going to win the queen here. c3 and now queen e7. So maintaining an attack on the queen. Queen takes, king takes. Bishop takes, knight takes is strong here with the threat of knight c2 check and black's doing really well here. Uh, so for example bishop d1, knight f3 check, 
here, Queen C5, we're following this classic correspondence game after Bishop G4, White had to resign. So believe it or not, this did really happen. As in Hallier against Winkleman, wink wink, Germany 1987. No, it really did happen, this game, I honestly, as far as I'm aware. So they played d4 here, which is a mistake. So queen takes h7 is uh, critical. And after knight d4, uh, so wiki is quite favorable in its comments here, although white is a whole rook up. Black, you know, is really active. I mean, that is the reality here. Black is really, you know, th these pieces are, haven't got out of the box yet. And black's got all these active pieces and active bishops. So there is there is something to be said for this position. Uh, queen g6 is is interesting, and then knight c3. This is a critical test, where you know the queen's guarding c2, so don't have to worry about knight takes c2. Uh, after knight f4, queen f7, it seems you know this could get into big trouble for white, for example, after knight g5 check. You can see that white's getting into big trouble. So that's uh, an example where white can get into huge trouble. It is a tricky position. So instead of queen g6 check, though, um, you know, let's say bishop e2, then here knight takes, this is even more of a disaster, knight f4 check, and you win the queen there on h7. So these are actually good adverts for the Colorado gambit. If g3, you just play queen g4 here and if bishop g2 then queen e2 checkmate if knight c3 then don't play uh, knight takes because the queen's guarding c2 that's something to be aware of but what you can do is bishop e6 now in this critical position after bishop e6 if white tries to say castle kingside bishop e2 looks logical the queen's still holding c2 here uh, we have knight takes e2, knight takes e2, and now say black castles queenside. There is a lot of peace activity for black. And I believe it's kind of unwise to castle with white here on the king side. This actually, I think, justifies the whole gambit. It's actually rather interesting for black here after bishop e7. So the bishop is held by the queen there. Uh, here, uh, basically... Uh, we, if d3, then there's a good resource for black. Can you spot what black can play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video, black to play here. And this also would have occurred after g3. Black has knight g3, f g3, knight takes g3. So hitting the queen, and the point is after taking, you have knight takes e2 check. And black ends up with a big advantage there, fully justifying the gambit. There's still uh, raging attack possibilities. So if we have a look at that again, uh, yeah, it seems that white's going to be in big trouble on castling here. Uh, so bishop e7. If um, if we have a look at again, instead of... Sorry, I keep showing that one. But uh, if h3, then just rook g8, supported by the bishop on e6. So if knight g3, again, we have this mechanism, knight takes g3 to hit h7, and black's going to be doing great. If f4, then actually bishop g4 is good. And after rook, f2, bishop c5. So you can see the activity of black. Actually, it's more than just a laugh here. It's actually quite good for black after d3. Black's really getting a super aggressive position with the advantage. So this is... You know, this is a point to celebrate if white actually castles kingside here. Uh, if white's much more careful and tries to navigate how to castle queenside, though, that could be a different story. Uh, so queen g6 takes the queen away from being a kind of loose liability and hits the bishop. Gains the tempo. Now d3 to try and castle queenside is probably one of the absolute best ways to play. So with the idea of just trying to, you know, bishop d2 and castle queen side. Uh, so say check c3. White can actually play g3 here safely because uh, the king's protecting the knight. But yeah, white would need to know this stuff. And then 
preparing to castle queenside is going to be great for white with an advantage but uh you know in in your online uh, blitz i'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to just castle kingside here and there's a lot of fun to be had from this position after bishop e7 uh, just to put g3 on the board uh so uh you just play knight takes g3 so hitting the queen and then we have knight takes e2 check thanks very much and taking her so yeah uh, there's a lot of fun to be had there in this Colorado gambit uh, it seems in this very sacrificial variation let's just go back so very very sacrificial variation where you actually offer an entire rook with Queen promotion it's wild it's it's really wild position this knight d4 so what really needs to actually know what they're doing uh, so pretty outrageous but can be actually quite dangerous so yeah although as as wiki says although white's a rook up black's really active and white has some you know some some issues to deal with here king safety issues in particular especially if they castle kingside and also the, you know the queen has a liability on h7 it's kind of misplaced so yeah very very interesting wild thing to be aware aware of if you want to play the Nimzovich defense and annoy people that want to go back into the scotch game with knight f3 it might be an interesting surprise weapon of choice now there's one or two variations uh just to uh clarify uh the first one on uh taking if they try and cling on you can actually play a more solid move here instead of e5 you can actually play knight h6 and this isn't too bad uh for black if g4 e6 and you're hitting the knight and then like taking there it's it's rather unpleasant for white this position um, black's having a fantastic game so that's a uh, total backfire on white so knight h6 is actually quite uh, an interesting move in this position if white's really uh, going to play knight h4 so knight h6 if bishop d3 e5 this position yeah you're hitting the knight just bear that in mind so um if d4 e5 check knight f7 now this is interesting of the queen d6 here and you're getting a very active game and it's possible to play this because the knight's holding h8 and black's getting actually an advantage here this is a really nice game for black so yeah there's something to be said for for this instead of bishop d3 here if queen h5 check immediately g6 f takes h takes this position with knight f7 is possible so this is actually um this is actually following uh an over the board game which white actually was, was a very very strong player as if against so if uh, 2660 against snyder who has become a real exponent in this variation on this occasion snyder actually lost with the black pieces even though he's got quite an active position for the moment but you know it's an interesting game anyway his opponent was much higher rated anyway so yeah there are there are these interesting variations with knight h6 if you don't want to go totally on the wild side if white's playing wild knight h6 is actually a really interesting move here okay and the other variation i i wanted to uh pick up on as if white played e5 the kind of declined variation trying to kill the fun here d6 is you'd you'd think it's interesting uh but if they really want to kill the fun bishop b5 preparing to give up the light square bishop if needed uh, to get a good, good grip on squares or inflict structural damage so if you have this position if they play d4 you can take on g2 and that'll be fine for black black's actually doing well there but if they're really dull they will just castle here uh so just instead of d4 or sorry not castle losing the knight just just knight f3 is the move and after e5 knight c3 uh white is going to be uh having a, a clear advantage so yeah this is this is uh the, the chicken variation unfortunately just e5 <laughs> does does ask black what what is is black doing uh, not really getting a dynamic aggressive gambit here but rather the you know the, the funds being killed mostly 
so yeah i i think you've got to go into these fun gambits with your eyes wide open for the up and down sides so there is some fun to be had if white really is desperate to cling on the pawn and onto the pawn and win your rook there's a lot of fun to be had especially if they castle kingside later but this line is one of the dull, more duller ones where they just you know inflicting structural damage and putting the knight back saying i just want a small to large advantage without too much controversy and this pawn is objectively just blocking in the bishop i know it's, it's dreadful position me uh so okay it's but i never claimed it was a great game it's just it's just a fun one to be aware of for, for your blitz chess so uh okay comments questions likes shares subscribes with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much